It's a Mad Meccano twin build. Hi. If you want even more Meccano goodness, why don't you check out my Patreon channel? And please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I post updates in the community section, not only for this week's Patreon build, but also for what I'm currently working on. Thank you, and back to the build. Hi, and welcome back. This week's build is a penultimate build for the 1960s set one. And it's been a bit of a journey to get here, so maybe the Jeep is symbolic for where I am now. Because in general, life is a journey. We get good sections and not so good sections. And times when we think, what the hell? Why does this have to happen to me? I also think that life can help form the person we are, for better or worse. So in some ways, I'm glad for a harder life, as it's taught me resilience. Helped to give me insight to what others might be going through. And allowed me to understand what I want out of my life. And that is to be at peace. To be stable and sure-footed in this moment. Whether this is a moment of tranquil calm in the river. Or whether it's facing the rapids that life throws at us. Because it's easy to rage against the injustices that we see daily thrown on us. But how often do we really count our blessings? Those little, seemingly unimportant things that help us to pull through a day. My father was a perfectionist. So many things that didn't get finished as he'd made a mistake or had to understand every part of it before we could start, not realising that to start it is part of the understanding. My mother is an observer who waits till the last second to do things. So many things were half done or, or proverbially held together with duct tape and lengths of string from, from the tin labelled string, too short to be useful but too long to throw out. And me? I'm a great planner and an even better procrastinator. I will put off what needs to be done until it's either too late to do it or I achieve it in the nick of time. Which is not a great way of operating. But many of our greatest moments in history are because of procrastination. Things born out of the need in the nick of time that by, happy, that by happy coincidence, work perfectly. This model of the iconic Jeep, that famous Second World War vehicle invented by Willys, and also jointly manufactured by Ford, referred to by Dwight Eisenhower as being one of the vehicles that helped win the Second World War. The Jeep proved its versatility in all theatres of war, and is still in use today, by many countries, albeit in more modern forms. However, the Woody's Jeep is a tale of lost chances, the demand of war, and in my opinion, some dishonourable actions by the US War Department. And sadly, I don't have the time to tell all the story today. But I have some other Jeep builds coming up in the near future that will give me the time to tell all the story. But this I can tell you, the Jeep, or the US Army truck, one quarter ton, four by four, command reconnaissance, to give it its correct name, was designed and built by the American Bantam Car Company. A company that designed and produced the first prototype in a gobsmacking 49 days, with a hand-built prototype being constructed in Butler, Pennsylvania in 1940 and then driven 270 miles to Camp Ho Holabird in Baltimore, which is the US Army's vehicle testing centre. My father-in-law in the late 1960s needed a vehicle, and for his inspiration he took the dinky number 405 Universal Jeep. 
using the steering wheel as a datum point for scale, he built a replica of the model. The statement was so simple when the story was first told to me. The transmission was taken from a scrapped car, the wiring loom from another vehicle. The metal was um, acquired from Concert Ironworks and the work carried out at a friend's farm. And it sailed through the DVLA assessment. He said the miles to gallon were awful. The Jeep went on to serve him for a number of years until it was replaced by a Ford Zodiac. Sadly, it ended its days in a local scrapyard, being crushed. The logbook was rescued before its demise and was handed back to my father-in-law. And, along with a couple of photos and a newspaper cu cutting, is all that remains of his talent for making things and knowledge of metalworking. And as we live in a safer world, the talents that he showed would be harder to get through the safety inspections. After all, the Bantam BRC was built in 49 days and its first major trial was a nearly 300 mile road trip. And were all but a low engine torque past every requirement of the Army's criteria. Its history, however, is cemented in our cultural story. And the image taken on the 9th of June showing the newly captured Pegasus Bridge in France with a jeep and trailer crossing the deck perfectly captures this iconic vehicle. There are some 30 or so different bridge designs. Each one has strengths and weaknesses. And the right bridge in the right place is great, and the wrong bridge in the wrong place is a disaster, with both the Tay and the Silver Bridge collapses springing to mind. The Lifting Bridge, also referred to as a Bascular Bridge, is a design that dates back to ancient history. The term Bascular is derived from the French term for balance, and that is what this bridge is in its basic form. Normally a counterweight is used to raise the bridge quickly, but also hydraulic or steam power can be used as well. The ancestor to the Bascular Bridge is the drawbridge, and that lineage can be seen in this model, as the operating method is that of a rope to lift the deck. We also see the use of this, of this type of bridge predominantly over water, carrying either road or rail, but also allowing for ease of water transport below. Many of these bridges are famous across the world, with the Pegasus Bridge in Beneville, famous for its action of D Company 2nd Airborne Battalion of the Oxford and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry in the opening stages of, of D-Day. Out of interest, it wasn't called the Pegasus Bridge at the time. It, it was renamed late in 1944 in honour of the soldiers who'd fought there, taking the mythical creature emblazoned on their patches, the Pegasus, for its name. Or the Broadway Bridge in Portland. It has the distinction of being the longest span of a rail-type bascular bridge design in the world and is now registered on the National Register of Historic Places. And then there was a tower bridge in London. But to be fair, that's not a bascular bridge, but a hybrid. It's really a suspension and bascular bridge design. At the beginning of the 20th century, we see the great American bridge engineers designing bascular bridges all across America. Without the work of William of William Donald Schneiser, Theodore Rall, and Joseph Strauss, some of the world's most photographed and visited places might well not exist. America at the time showed the, showed the world what it meant to be great. It fought battles against the impossible, it took us to new heights by building colossal engineering projects. They showed the world what it meant to stand tall and do what, what could not be done. And while it's not a bascular bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge 
designed by Joseph Strauss, is a symbol of that ability. Mr Strauss insisted on safety before the construction of the bridge, with the attachment of a large net under the bridge. The net is accredited with saving 19 lives, with only 11 lost on the project. Sadly, 10 on one day, on the 17th of February, 1937, when a section of scaffolding collapsed and fell through the safety net. But his work in revolutionising vascular bridges is mostly unrecognised, as he championed the use of concrete instead of cast iron as the counterweight, thus reducing the cost of bridge making. And as I finish this script, I'm left with a feeling of frustration. This is the problem with any job, and YouTube is a job. Whether it pays or not is beside the point. This is a form of production, and you have to keep turning the handle. And at times we get to a stage where turning the handle is just hard. Partly due to the very real issue of carer's fatigue that has kicked in right now. I am just so, so tired. I don't think that I've ever known a time in my life when I felt like this. Even when my daughter was ill as a child and a good night's sleep was four hours over an eight hour period. But you have to keep turning the handle. You have to keep going. So, not my best of scripts, I think. And for those of you who have got this far, thank you for listening. But, is it easier to just give in and quit? And the answer is, of course, yes. But that's not in my makeup. I've always been a fighter. When you are knocked down, you have two simple choices. Either stay down or get back up. I choose to get back up, even if I'm going to be knocked down again. At least I've tried to reach for my dreams, even if that reach is not long enough. And when I look at what our elders have done before us, I see the inspiration to keep going, to get back up again and again. Maybe it's the Celt in me, my Welsh, Scottish and Irish, and Irish ancestry that almost laughs in the face of desperation. I also think that the answer is out there. You just have to search. To keep fighting, to solve the problem that's in front of you, even if it seems impossible. There is a solution. You just have to keep looking. But unlike Joseph Strauss, I also think you have to thank the people who lift you up and to get to where you are now. So for those of you who tune in and subscribe and watch this channel, thank you. You help make the difference.